Hello everyone watching at home, welcome to round five of the Adelaide Eternal Highlander Cup 2019 playing for the Mox Emerald as the first prize. I am Sava McClinton and in the booth with me is Drew Carter. Hi everyone. So we have a match up here between Edward Watts who is on the left, Ed is on Rug Life and on the right we have Graham King from Melbourne and he is on Blue Moon. Whose deck would you like to look at first? Um, let's look at Ed's first, it's more familiar. Yes, yep. So uh, Especially you, to you, Sav. Especially to me. If you haven't seen the deck tech already, just go, we'll link it in the comments uh, or at the end of the video, so you can go check out the deck tech. Rather than me telling you more about it right now, you can get all the information there. In short, it's basically a tempo deck, and you use green threats, which can't be pyroblasted and lightning bolted and, and the like, because they get really, really swole, uh, like Tarmogoyf and Hooting Mandrills and, uh, to some extent, Scavenging Ooze. And you apply pressure with these beat down in a very, very similar fashion to uh, rug tempo in Legacy. And you often finish the game with one of your two big planeswalkers, Chandra or Garrick, uh, or the uh, big price of progress. Uh, all the burn spells go to the face, the goal there being that you almost always get your opponent to stabilize and they're on a low life total, and then you just go, yep, gotcha, burn them out. So it's quite an aggressive uh, tempo build. Uh, so let's switch over to... Uh, I'll just say quickly, yeah. so, so some of the interesting cards, he is running Mission Briefing and... Um, uh, what else has he got? Terramander. Terramander, yeah, some newer cards. Just uh, And I think Ed's quite new to this deck as well, and he was... He was saying to you, like... Um, uh, the, actually, you'll probably <laughs> see it during the tournament. At least at least every second round, Ed looked over to me, because I, I was a TO on the day, so I'm behind the TO table, and I'd get his eye contact. Uh, he would get my eye contact, and then he'd shake his fist at me and be like, oh, your deck, oh, like, it's just because it was so hard to play. He just kept he kept going, like, oh, like, curses. I think he found it really stressful to play, because it was, like, always on a knife's edge, whether or not yeah. he was finally getting there or not. You're balancing on this tightrope, and if you make the wrong play, it's basically you just lose the game. But as long as you maintain that tightrope walk, you will destroy your opponent. But the opponent doesn't see the tightrope walk. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm in this game. or well, I'm totally not in this game. But for you, every game is just like stay on the straight and narrow, make sure you make this work, and cobble it, together your days at the right time and your price of progress. And sometimes you don't regrowth back the uh, the time walk or the A call. You just go like, Pop you. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> just regrowth back pop for 12. And Ed was doing really well, and so was Graham. Were these ranked 1 and 2 at the time? Yes, so this okay. is table 1. I should have I should have mentioned that. Nice. So we're actually watching table 1 here, and uh, fighting at... I, are they both undefeated? I can't remember, but yeah, it's table 1. At, the, they're both undefeated yeah. at uh, table 1 at round 5. So this is, you know, someone has to take a loss. And we'll check over to Graham King's list over here. He's on Blue Moon. Now, Blue Moon is a mainstay of the format that just kind of waxes and wanes in fashion. And based on the coverage you've seen today, you might note that there's quite a bit of the blue-red shell going around. But that's actually a minority. We just happen to have them on feature on the feature matches, and they happen to be doing very well today. So Blue Moon is all about controlling the game. Uh, we can link the deck tech as well. Why not? Um, and what you do is you use your pseudo card advantage engines, Blood Moon, Back to Basics, and Magic to the Moon, as a way to essentially blank a certain number of cards in your opponent's hand, kind of acting like a card advantage tool. And then the rest of it is just a good control shell. Yeah, and like we should note the incredible spice. The Niv Mizzet Paroon did a great debut on this day, um, was just carving up people. Um, also yeah. interesting... I, like sorceries, I think he was expecting aggro meta. Like Adelaide had that reputation, deservedly. Mm -hmm. Like we see, Hour of Devastation and Sweltering Suns, which I like. Sweltering Suns main deck. Yeah, I've been a fan of playing Sweltering Suns in Blue Moon type decks, mainly because cycling is just always relevant. And in this format, dealing three damage to to a number of creatures is often relevant, like very often relevant. It's not going to be very relevant against Rug Life, which generally deploys a single threat, and the threat usually has four toughness or more, yeah. or some kind of resilience, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the Die Fleet Daredevil's already got, got value. Um, so Another spicy one, I'll just say quickly, was Expansion Explosion. That could be relevant against Rug Life, if you're firing off an A-Call or a Time Walk or something. Yeah, I really like Expansion Explosion and Highlander in general. Uh, it's, it's slow, but when you resolve it, it's great. But its front half is almost always relevant in Highlander. Almost. I can't think of, you know, there's very, very few matches. Mid-range is probably the only match I can think of where 
it's actively bad because you're very rarely wanting to play to that late game to have, you know, uh, mm-hmm. three damage mm-hmm. and to one particular target. And you're very rarely ever copying anything except for a path to exile, which... Um, but you can copy your own stuff, which makes it better. Yes, yeah, yeah. for sure. So there, there is a backup there. Yeah. yeah. yeah All right, sure. well, should we get down to the match? All right, so let's check and see what the players are doing. They have drawn their cards. Uh, Ed is on a multi six, so let's check out the six. Looks like mm. quite a land heavy and day's hand. It's got a lot of land. And there's a red card, light up the yeah, stage. Yeah, light up the stage. That's days a pretty and bad hand. But he's on a multi six. Yeah, so you just build up to three mana and then hard cast light at the stage? No, it feels bad. <laughs> like, if you're in a tempo deck, you basically always mulligan a hand unless you've got a creature, or a threat. I don't say creature. Sometimes you go, well, you know, three land and Garrick on a multi six. You go, oh, I'll keep this because my threat is Garrick. I just have to work my way into it and then generate some tokens. He's kept the top card, so hopefully it's a Delver or something. creature, yeah, that can activate light at the stage. It's a preordain. Preordain, that's good. Yeah, preordain can help you. You know, engineer a situation where you're finding your threat. I'd probably play my preordain first in case I draw another, like a Terramander or something mm. that you want to cast straight away. But we'll see what he's got. For sure, I guess he's playing around the fact that he's seen he's seen Graham rock a daze here and there. Mm. So maybe he's playing around that. But actually, you know, if you're playing yeah. dazes and you're and you're on the tempo game, you're happy. <laughs> yeah, that daze was actually really cool in Graham's list. Like we don't often see that in Blue Moon, like in a control deck. But mm-hmm. he explained that he just used it as a kind of alternative to like mana acceleration, just to make sure he can jam and resolve the the Blue Moon on turn three or whatever. Was yeah, it? he often also found that uh, he was protecting the Blue Moon. You know, like okay. he goes, if you can play this and you can you can. Uh, uh, resolve the blue moon your game is so much easier so just have any number of ways to make sure you can resolve your blood yeah. moon he doesn't go quite to misdirection but yeah days is good yeah so this was a a turn to uh zero four guy wall thing in the ice thing in the ice and uh there was a days from ed just to ensure that, that zero four doesn't come down because zero four is actually quite relevant against uh, yeah. tempo it's a fantastic card against aggro really if, in a, if you're on, especially if you're, sh- you're restricted to two colors mm-hmm. it doubles as a wing con and, and buys you time early on yeah and uh ed's ed's deck is quite low to the ground so returning a land as a cost from days is, is very rarely a cost mm. uh I like uh, Graham's un unglued <laughs> basics. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. yeah, I mean Ed's drawn the preordain and the ponder, so he's got um, card selection, which is good. Um, I, well, you just jam light up the stage here. No, you just pass. He's got force of will in his hand, cycling electrolyze end of turn. Yeah, this is probably Graham just trying to find lands because if yeah. he can just make sure that he hits his land drops, it's going to be a huge benefit. I think Graham's like just um, happily. He must be extremely chuffed with the game state at this moment. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the way rug loses, where you you don't actually have a threat, which is why there's you know you know fourteen or so different threats, thirteen or something like that, where you just go, well, I need to ride one of these, otherwise I'm playing a bad control deck. <laughs> yeah, there's a remand in Ed's hand as well, and that's a I think a polluted delta on Graham's side, not mm. not a wall of glare. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes would wall of glare be good against rug? <laughs> so how, um, how do you, how do you break? So if you're in, if you're the rug life pilot, and you've gotten to this point through, you know, bad chart draws, how do you break it? What, what's your uh, plan? So you break it by a planeswalker, which is why Garrick is in this in this list. Oftentimes you can engineer a situation where you know you've gone a little bit later, you end up playing a Garrick with a spell pierce up, and they counter it, and then you daze that uh, other counter back, okay. and just make sure that it resolves. Once it's resolved, you start churning out some wolf tokens, and unless they find specifically the lightning bolt. Then you'll be golden. There's a hoodie. Yep, Hopefully, hoodie we're, we're with a remand backup. Yeah, hoodie mandras with two minor backup is is where you want to be. Unfortunately, Graham's on four mana, so he's got a chance to do double counter spell. Yep. We'll see if he's got it. So mana drain pretty good on a three on a six drop, but remand pretty strong. So yeah. this is this should technically be a remand on hoodie mandrills, All right? Uh, to gain the card advantage. No. Yeah. Uh, so like. If you oh yeah, because if you you can just drain it again. Yeah, like okay, you can you can let the drain go, and then that way, it's just not there. Spell, but well, either way. So why doesn't so Graham could have just drained it again? Uh, he didn't have the colors, so that's not relevant. Okay. Uh, so there's situations where you do that, and situations where you don't. But mm. it's mainly the fact that like remanding their drain so that their drain is now in their hand means that they still have a counter spell when you light up the stage or something the next yeah. turn. Okay. 
So instead you just, um, actually no, sorry, I correct myself. You would end up having to have a fetch land in hand or something to play the Hooting Mandrills. So mm. yeah, you can't remind your own Hooting Mandrills there. No. Yeah, so man's really good against Hooting Mandrills because of the devil. Yeah. 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 Um, for, for some reason, I just thought the game had gone longer and there were more cards in the graveyard, yeah. but... Uh, uh, that was definitely not the case. There's only one delve spell in Rug Life, so oftentimes uh, the remand on hooting mandrels doesn't do much. Graham just often he seemed to always have counter magic. I did tell him this on this day, like he, he must have just run the exact right number. Yeah, um, especially adding that days in has uh, mm. been a way to catch people a lot. And, and people that don't play around the days just get got. Oh, double yeah. Planeswalker. Yep. That's a nice use of drain mana. Yeah, seems decent. <laughs> I think this is uh, this is the point at which uh, Ed scoops the cards up and goes to game two. It's a fate ceiling there, so get out of range of lightning bolt or whatever for mm. Jace. He says, no, I'll, I'll keep this one. And a factual fiction for good yeah, measure. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> you know, here six, six colourless mana is great. It's the exact number of factual fiction, <laughs> Jason Mind Sculptor, and Dak Faden. <laughs> Ed's looking a little somebody. Looking at the board state, hmm. <laughs> like, hmm. This and is and not going well for me. And one of the beautiful things about Blue Moon as well is that, like, Price of Progress was doing well, like in aggro and kind of tempo shells on the day. Completely plays around Price of Progress. So one of your rug life's main kind of come from behind cards is effectively dead. Yeah, yeah, for and that's sure. a big deal. To the point you have to side it out, and you lose at one of your you know one of your best tools. Yeah, yeah. Um, overall, rug life is uh, designed to be good against. You know, just control decks in general, like most tempo decks are, and you know, just its its natural predator is uh, you know mid range decks, really really good Tassiga, Siege Rhino type decks, um, but it's good in against most control decks. Against a Blue Moon deck, <laughs> maybe not. We, yeah, we don't know yet. We, they don't take much damage from their life uh, from their lands. They've only got a Steam Vents. They don't take much damage from Price of Progress. Like it's really really hard to engineer a situation where you get them. But they struggle to deal with your four toughness guys. True. Yeah, true. So. I just wouldn't say it's particularly favourable. No. Um, so here's the cost of tapping out, I guess. So tapping out meant that uh, Graham could deploy three powerful spells and take maximum value from the dig through time. Uh, no, from the uh, uh, drain. Uh, drain, yeah. Uh, however, it does give an opportunity for Ed to put a threat out and time walk as well. And yeah. the is it charm, you know, is it charm is in hand, so. You know, this, this Terramander can become a one Swalbro. Oh, no, he cannot become a Swalbro because it costs exactly six to activate it. Yeah. But light up the stage is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a shame you could... What, if he had Izzet Charm, could you, would, could you loot and then... He wouldn't have had the mana to loot and then... Uh, I believe the Izzet Charm is in Graham's hand. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry, yeah. So this is a decent... Um, actually, it's an actively good light up the stage. So you know how people were talking about light up the stage when it got spoiled, and they're going, you know, oh, but if you reveal counter spells and so on and so forth, and I'm like, no, light up the stage is great in this deck. It's fantastic. <laughs> it is so good. Like you've literally revealed a counter spell, literally revealed the card that people don't want to reveal, and it's fantastic here. You've got a Tarmogoyf out of it, and you've got a counter spell for whatever removal spell they have, and the next turn. Uh, who uh, the um, Terramander mm. is threatening to become a five five? Yeah, so you probably it's probably going to untap with one guy because of the counter spell. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You you keep a guy, and that guy will be big enough to kill uh, Jason Mind Sculptor or Dak Faden. Mm. So but I wonder what Graham's de got. he's definitely not ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, be nice Ed if he's definitely had... behind, but yeah, it's fine. The die fleet would be sweet on like the time walk here with the double planeswalker. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> in play. Uh, oh. Die Fleet Daredevil stock goes way up if your if your meta is full of Kess Pod and Rug Life because you know Time Walk is around. Yeah. Uh, and Graham's got Force as well, so um, in his deck, uh, so he he wasn't utterly defenseless necessarily. Next turn, we don't know. Mm. So it's bounce on the Time Yep, I like this play because yeah. you know bouncing the Time and Goyf and being able to counter it on the way down is great. It also makes sure that the uh, the Time and Goyf, um, uh, it, it also makes sure that the uh, amount of pressure can't be stopped by the counter spell. Also, it makes Ed tap out to swell the um, Terramander, and you, if you could got a fire or some a braid or some kind of um, interaction in response. Yeah. Well, there's Goblin Guide. Yep. This is why I love Goblin Guide in 
rug life. There's so many situations where any other creature you top deck, you know, Delver of Secrets are just like, yeah, whatever. It's game. It's turn six. This isn't great. But Goblin Guide is almost always a live top deck, even if they've got blockers. Mm. You know, they've got like a three four on blocks. It, it just it just you know goes wide. So Going wide is great. It's one mana off, I think, this turn, making the Terramander 5-5, five five, which is a real shame. Yeah, I, I'm i personally not running Terramander. I've been trying it here and there, and I find that it just makes the deck go... It forces the deck to want to go to the late game, and I hate going to the late game. I just yeah. want to win early, and that's why Goblin Guide's well, sweet. Well, here you're saying the bit of a nombo with the Hooting Mandrels and the Terramander. And, yeah, exactly. Like, normally, just one Delve spell in the whole deck is perfectly fine. Yeah. But this is kind of like you have two Delve spells. I think Ed's got Young Pyromancer and Spell Snare in hand. I'm like, oh, what happened to the Young Pyromancer? I don't know. So this is this is interesting because you can cast the the counter spell by fetching a basic island here or, or a steam vent, uh, you know, steam vent equivalent 1.0, uh, and use the counter spell, which is in exile because it's still ready to go from the light up the stage. But if you do that, then you turn on their days. So. Uh, here, Ed is actively playing around days because he knows that the spell snare is not going to be relevant once he untaps anyway, and he wants to just use it. Or he's forgotten about the counter spell. Or he's forgotten about it. <laughs> Which is easy to do because yeah. he's just kind of sitting there in exile. Yeah. Okay, um, so Goyf gets counted on the way back down with a is a charm on the spell snare. Mm -hmm. So that would have worked either way. He just he's now down a spell snare. Yep. Yeah, he's got one less one minus one spell snare. Um, unfortunately, the counter spell stays in exile, which means Terramand is still too far off from flipping around. Yeah. Although Jace is down to one loyalty now, that's getting low. But Gray must have a, a few cards in hand. He's got three. Yeah. Well, well, he needs too many. Swelling Suns or something, and it's yeah. yeah Dak Faden. Between Dak Faden and Jason Mind Sculpt, you're going to find a Sweltering Suns or our our Devastation. No, that does damage to planes. You're seeing a lot of no, it does creatures and planeswalkers. But are your own planeswalkers? Uh, that's bad, right? Sure. Yeah, I'll have to check. <laughs> um, He's seeing like six cards a turn. Oh yeah, Duck he's, seeing, so he's, he's definitely got an answer here. So let's see. We don't have to see what the answer is. Oh, is it, what is this? Dig yeah. through time. Okay, dig through time into any number of, you know, sweltering suns and anger of the gods. And that'll do it. We'll see whether or not it gets done. Uh, Tarmogoyf has been exiled, um, has been put to the graveyard, so you don't have to count your your types in graveyards and have to systematically exile them, but sometimes you just get got by regrowth time growth. And that's mm. why regrowth is sweet. Yeah, Graham's got a preordain, so further selection if he needs it. Oh yeah, preordain and then something else, and then use the preordain to find anger of the gods. So he's got to expect Terramander to grow soon. So that is a looming threat, mm. at least now. Um, Here it is. There's three mana. Electrolyze? It's three mana. Here we go. Anger. anger no, he doesn't have anger. Yep. It's ring. Sweltering Suns, there yeah. it is, yeah. So it, it was it was inevitable that that would happen. Uh, yeah, well through the 6 plus 7, you saw 13 cards that turn. You don't concede, right, if you're, if you're on rug, because you can top deck Acol. <laughs> uh, it's not Acol, now you concede. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. Power to the tenacity of Ed here, playing through a miserable game state of an opponent having two Planeswalkers active and going to their untap and having a handful of cards after digging, dacking, and chasing. <laughs> At least he drew basics, so he wasn't going to get crippled by back-to-basics. So. True, true. Yeah. This was this was a perfect example of what happens when you multi six, you scry, and you still don't find your threats early enough. Uh, rug life can't contend in the late game. It's just, it's not designed to. Uh, it's it's all about, you know, get their life total down early, then finish them off in the late game if you need to. Otherwise, finish the game before the late game. And uh, the mulligan just did not, uh, the hand of six just did not get there. Uh, there's many situations there where I multi five, where you just kind of go, I'm more than happy to draw two land and a threat and a counter spell and a burn spell. I'm happy with that. Mm, hope to get a goblin guide and yep. remand or something. Yeah, just like I'd be happy with open opening my four my my hand of four, multi four, and I'm on Delver of Secrets, land, land, and uh, brainstorm. Yeah. You know, or lightning bolt or something. I'm happy with that. You know, days days would be a great one there. So Graham's definitely given up on the moon plans, ditching all three. <laughs> um, do you think he'll sign him out? Well, he's probably. It, it, for rug life, 
we play both Match to the Moon and Blood Moon in the sideboard. So having Moon in your in your deck post board against us, it's a sign that we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly don't mind if you moon, especially you, if you've got gush uh, yeah. against back to basics. Here's, a, here's a time walk potentially. Yep, I mean that's two Gs. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I haven't been playing with mission briefing because of the mana commitments, and I really, really like my moons in the board. Like I really, really like to go. I just have to fetch a single basic island and a single basic forest. And as long as I fetch these two, I can play the game and I'm great this is fantastic yeah. you know? you've also got um, the death rush had to help out a little bit if you mm. need it yeah mm. okay so Graham sh should side out the moons yeah yeah for yeah. sure here's Niv <laughs> yeah, surely that's uh, that's a point yeah. Ed calmly goes yep <laughs> he's gathering information you know, true yeah I yeah. think that's cool you just go like yep okay I'm going to find out all the things in your deck so is Will Farrell <laughs> 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 looking on unimpressed <laughs> <laughs> uh, analyzing the game state and realizing how this just in general the situation did escalate quickly so what's he got Acol he's yeah. almost tapped out it's all about the Acol right oh it was one blue is it Acol uh, oh. it's not Acol <laughs> uh, so Graham draws a card from New Mizzet does yep, a damage one damage has lots of yeah, this is yes. information. Yeah, this is like, I'm going to probe you for information I know that I'm going to die and I know I'm firing behind but let's find out what you got it's pretty it's hard relevant. to Oh yeah, okay. I was gonna say it's hard to cast expand the ex explosion bit with when you're playing a lot of basic lands, but I think mm. yeah, it's still fine. Mm. Uh, he's got snap, mystic. How about influence. expansion on your opponents at time walk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go, ah, oh, I got this time walk. Now wait a second, wait. Yours resolves first, so you take the next turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> You'd have do you have to have any natural turn before you have your extra turn? Uh, no, I believe that you take a turn after this one, right? That's the text, like, right. take a turn after this one. Okay. So, yeah, you go, like, expansion, and I will take a turn after this one. <laughs> but right. then, their time walk resolves, and they go, but I'm going to take a turn after this one. <laughs> I don't know, you just call a judge. Yeah. All right, sideboards. Uh, so, rug life, what, what, what do you do? Easy. Bring in your, your bebs, uh, I mean, your, your reps, your red elemental blast and pyroblast, uh, in Ed's list, he's running Seed Time. I'm not running Seed Time because we're already so good against Control anyway, so, like, saving sideboard slots for Blood Moon, Magic of the Moon, and so on, just to hedge on our weak matchups, which are things like lands and midrange, is where I want to be. However, because he's got Seed Time, 100%, so this, is, this is the matchup where Seed Time comes in, for sure. Uh, Fluster Storm, really, really great at protecting your threats. Your ideal hand is uh, one mana creature, and uh, one mana interaction, and if otherwise zero mana, which is great, but uh, and then you just go like turn two, Delver of Secrets with a Fluster Storm up, past turn, here we go. Um, he will also bring in Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library is always in here and it, it uh, in against control, and it, it uh, increases the number of uh, threats you have. It, you consider it a Tarmogoyf, it's a threat that they must answer. Same with. Uh, you know, things like Cinder Vines. You bring in Cinder Vines against Control, not because you care about destroying artifacts and enchantments, but simply because you care about a pyrostatic pillar, half a pyrostatic pillar, that just keeps burning them. And often the opponent will, uh, you know, dig to try and find an answer for the for the uh, Cinder Vines, and when they, by the time they've actually dug to find an answer for it, if they even have an answer, uh, they have taken 8 damage, and mm. you're 100% happy with that. It changes the game around this card, and they go, oh, enchantments, we can't deal with them. And so Cinder Vines and Sylvan Library are great. Yeah, as long as you do 4 damage for 2 mana, you're happy. Ha, yeah, happy with that, no problem. Yeah. Alright, um, so on Graham's side, what would he bring in? He's got Batiscoal, but that's really bad against Spell Pierce and uh, things like that. So, although the life gain's good, but I don't think he'll bring it in. Yeah, Blue really Elemental hard. Blast is great. Anger is great. Yeah. It's like, not... It's great because it kills a creature. So when you're against a tempo decks, don't ever look for value. Don't look for like, oh, I'm going to wait for them to play this, and then I'm going to anger of the gods of two things. You just treat anger of God, the gods as destroy target death right shaman. You just have to have a critical mass of removal spells. If you can one for one removal each of the threats, then you buy yeah you buy enough time to go into the late yep. game have the natural advantage that's it okay. absolutely disdainful strokes an interesting one it, it hits the delve guys i wouldn't bring it in mm. against you because you said so yeah the curve is so low yeah. in rug life that disdainful stroke is going to hit basically uh one creature i'd like to ask 
describe what that is for, actually, that card, but... I think it's probably against uh, various combo decks, ramp decks, and the late game against control. Mm. Okay. But even then, uh, you probably wouldn't even bring it in against control. Yeah. Fluster Storm, good in bringing it in against Rug. Yeah. Uh, so there's some tension here. There's a really, really tight uh, relationship between Fluster Storm, Red Elemental Blast, and Pyroblast, and sometimes and Hydro, Hydro Blast. like hy hypothetically. Uh, the way that Rug Life is built is to be highly resilient against. Uh, certain pieces of interaction and if you uh if you notice like the yeah, the, the green three the green trio mm. the green trio are you know tamagoyf Del, uh hooting mandrills and um scavenging goose and they're designed to be resilient against all of those types of removal like hydroblast and pyroblast but yet the control decks are forced to bring those cards in the the cards that are cheap interaction because they need a critical mass of cheap interaction. The thing is, they might line up very, very poorly. Same with Flusterstorm. Flusterstorm is uh, good at protecting combos and protecting threats. It's quite bad at other roles. Like, um, you know, you, you let's say that I go turn three Tarmogoyf with a counter spell up, with a spell pierce up, and then you pass a turn. Graham has to cobble together a, you know, a removal spell that actually hits the Tarmogoyf first and foremost, of which there are very, very, very few, and has to have the Fluster Storm up. So he does the removal spell, you go Spell Pierce, and then he Fluster Storms. That's the ideal situation. So you need a cobbling together of lots of niche, you know, fringy cards that have to line up very specifically against the right threats. And if they don't, all it takes is one little misstep and you plummet to your death as the tightrope <laughs> walking tempo deck right. holds your head underwater. So maybe not Fluster Storm, but... Uh, bring yeah, in I'd still probably bring it okay. in, but it's not good. All right. <laughs> and you'd probably bring in Magma Spray, Submerge, Slam yeah. Dunk, and Subterranean Tremors as another sweeper. Yeah, absolutely. Just bring in max removals. You've got four remo more removal spells. Subterranean Tremors, um, a bit of Melbourne tech. If you guys were running that in Grixis and so on, just to, as another sweeper, and it's also good against artifacts. And yeah, in the control sweep. mirror, you can get an 8-8 late game. All right, so bang, this bang. Is, this is the kind of uh, start that you basically want in um, uh, Rug Life, where you just basically want a threat. For me, because I'm maximum conservative, I just basically never run two threats out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just keep, like, if you have one threat, you play the one threat, Ooh, and nice. then you just protect it. Cheap yeah. interaction there. Oh, but you've got the dice. See, look, how, how, yeah. Oh, days again. Yep, days back. So this there is again. really good for the tempo player here, because... Yeah. The control player is down on mana. Uh, a key kind of defensive tool is gone in the form of Young Pyromancer. And even if he lost the war, he he'd be able it. to kill, kill mm. it with Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah. So giving lands off uh, Goblin Guide is largely irrelevant when you play him on turn one. Yeah. Giving lands off Goblin Guide on turn eight when you play him to go wide is largely irrelevant because they're going to die. And look at Graham here. He's got one land, now two, 14 life. That's not a lot of life. No. Yeah. Not at all. And he's been, you know... Sent back into the Stone Age in you know turn two, you know, this is essentially his turn two, and counter spell. Yep, another three damage at least or four. And one important thing to note is you only use counter spell on things that actually affect your game. So like they cast preordain or something, just ignore it. They cast you know fact or fiction, sure, just draw three cards. I don't care. Mm. Um, and oh, are we actually going to get punished by the literal thing that I said? We're <laughs> playing two guys, know, playing two threats. So. Uh, you know, you, you often just ride the Goblin Guide the whole game, and then when they finally try and remove it, they have to cast Sweltering Suns and remove the one Goblin Guide, and you're like, sure, I've got a counter spell anyway. <laughs> Interestingly, Graham shipped the turn when he yeah. could have jammed Anger. So he probably knows well, that there's, uh, sweeper. A, there's a counter spell in hand, but sometimes you just have to jam it. Oh, you jam it. Like, I need to use this removal spell. I jam it for sure. Otherwise, unless he's got an end of turn play in the form of Cleek or something like that. Yeah, um, click click could, could be okay once the Grim Lava Mancer is tapped. There's mm. also merit there to just flashing click in and then blocking oh, the yeah. Goblin Guide, but yeah. he I don't, maybe it doesn't have click. He's got Electrolyze, he would have used that before damage. Um, he has got a few green cards that won't be seen played too soon. Mm. Like, uh, Sylvan Library, I think. Yeah, Sylvan Library, Garrick. Chain Lightning, Garrick, and Young, young Pyromancer. Pyromancer. As you can see, just not deploying the Young Pyromancer here. Discipline play because you don't want to just get blown out. You're more than happy for them to go to eight, 
then cast Sweltering Suns with Flusterstorm back up like this. You don't fight over it. You let your things die. You go to your turn. You play Young Pyromancer yeah. and have a, you know, a spell pierce up or something. And then the Flusterstorm. I can see what you mean about Flusterstorm here because if you, it's now not very useful. You just let yeah. the Sweeper resolve. You let it resolve. Now yeah. the Flusterstorm's not going to stop the Young Pyromancer coming down. Exactly, exactly. He's so, got Electrolyze, Graham. That's excellent. Yeah, Electrolyze is fantastic here. Really, really good. The Young Pyromancer is going to have some trouble. This is Gush. Gush is going to be fantastic. Oh, so yeah. here we go with our Young Pyromancer, which obviously does not get Flusterstorm. No gush. And then gush. I'd yeah. lost storm that. Yeah. D denying two cards is, uh, you know, he's probably keeping the fluster storm because what he wants to do is go to his turn and play electrolyze with fluster storm back up and kill two things. But I can see the temptation of fluster storming there. Mm. No, that's fair. Chain lightning. Yeah. Get him down yeah. to five. And I, four I like this play as well. I really, really like this play. Um, because didn't fluster storm that either. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, it's because he's wants to protect the electrolyze. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is this is going to be interesting to see how it goes. So it's probably electrolyze two things, have a counter spell back up, and you just go sure. You could see where Bat Skull might be a way back into the game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you can get if you can resolve if you can make the game go that long, it's fantastic. But the problem is you just got to bring in a lot of load of the ground removal to actually survive that long, and it depends on how many cards you can actually take out. Um, Mission I've had briefing. Mm, nice. I've had many a game where an elemental token just goes a distance. Oh, yeah, well, that's only five turns. We've got light at the stage. Yeah. Some I've, kind of burn. After playing land, I don't know whether or not you light up the stage. Oh, I think you, you do... Because you, because you probably want to light up the stage and then just find a fetch land which can find a green source. Which I think you want to do something. Yeah, yeah. the following turn could be Sylvan Library. Cool. Oh, ah, copy. Nice. Let's see what he gets. Yeah, that's cool. So you get some magma spray and click. That's great. Yeah, that's a good combo. Yeah, this is this is definitely the way to uh, beat Rugglaf. You just kind of generate some value. Seed time's not a great one to flip. Seed time pretty bad. Yeah, but Delve's yeah, good. But it can be done next turn. So next turn... Only if he plays an instant, though. Uh, if he plays even the click. Oh, okay. Yeah. So main phase click is a blocker. Yeah. But what he can do, Graham can play it in the upkeep. That way there's no green source to actually play the seed time itself. Yeah. You can't play it later? Oh, good question. Yeah, mm. it's in your turn, yeah. Mm. You don't have to do it in response, my bad. Um, yeah, it's any time during, during the actual turn itself. Are they um, asking a bit of a judge call here? Probably about seed time timing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, seed timing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably going to be, I think, a magma spray on the Delver of Secrets to deny the scry effect. Yeah. Um, the oh, Actually, there's no effect. No effect. So there's no scry effect. It's just the really. better threat. Yeah, just the better one. And then uh, a main phase Vendillion click to look at the hand and, and uh, take something if relevant or leave it as is because the Vendillion click represents a blocker. It's good um, that he doesn't have to worry about price of progress at all here. Yeah, yep. Because that's always just a haymaker. Although he does have to worry about any burn spell. It's quite scary. Yeah, You don't have fire blast or anything. Um, he can still get there by spraying the... Oh, oh, it's just double removal. Okay. This is even better. Yep. And just remove both of them. Click at end of turn? Or that's a bit risky with seed time there. I think you just click click main phase. Unless he's got counter magic. Hmm. And I think Magma Spray is meant to kill the Delver of Secrets because that exiles a Delver. And then the... No, it doesn't, Doesn't sorry, because the Pyroblast doesn't kill the, uh, the to token because mm. the token's rigged. So, so if you're, if you're Graham here, do you think about I need to start doing damage or just I need to just um, keep playing control? Because I'm scared at four. Like, eventually, the, who's got inevitability here? Like, mm. I think the Burn player does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, he conservatively lets the click stay in exile just so that he doesn't die to like a flurry of burn spells uh, seed time is no longer relevant now now that the mana has been tapped so this is looking for a, a land to put on top yeah uh, so the surveil is relevant he can cast uh, he doesn't have to name what it is yet the target 20 lands in rug life is it enough uh, I've played 19 of them okay so yeah this is um, like you you never really want more than three lands on the battlefield. Oh, mission briefing on Gush is pretty sweet. Yeah. 
was expecting that to happen, but I didn't. You don't want it to happen because you're getting set back in my yeah. development, and yeah. there's a Garrick in hand. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes it really, really hard. And th- yeah, this is the irony: is that he ends up drawing the land <laughs> and, spe- and Spellseeker, which is a bad one at this point after yeah. two gushes. Yeah, the um, I think Graham could be back in this. It depends on if he can put any pressure on or. Oh, for sure. If he untaps and drops Niv Mizzet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Niv Mizzet would be great here. He could for probably sure. win. Just, just needs to. Oh, the fetch isn't helpful. Um, yeah, fetches are really, really dangerous here. To oh, turn relic too late. Nice. Relic has a very strange relationship with your opponent's graveyard and your search for as canter. <laughs> you yeah. go, oh, when, when do I want this? I'd. I'd, I'd yeah. I'd, I'd just describe the look. The scry's good. The surveil's good enough on the search. You don't mm. have to flip it. True, true. Um, and hooting, hooting mandrills is not yet gone, right? So technically, you could just stop hooting mandrills and time of life preemptively by preemptively um, cracking. But <laughs> it feels so close. He's like, "Come on, just die!" Like, <laughs> but that's good. Yeah, Sylvan Library is great because it's like. You have to do something. You have to answer it or respect it. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna find the burn or whatever else you need, but you don't want to waste counter magic on it because there could be burn in hand. Or yeah, and the other thing is, decision. it can be a bait where he kind of goes Sylvan Library and then you know he. Oh, look at that. Okay, so there was no, um, no counter spell for the Sylvan Library, which means that uh, Graham's hand is limited on the number of counter spells he has, and he's saving them for the actual burn spells. Or he just has no counter spells. Yeah, <laughs> it's just posturing. I think I think he made a decision there. Yeah. Um, so he's got ample land. So playing a Niv Mizzet would be pretty amazing. He might be flooding out a little bit at this point. Although the search should stop that. Well, the search didn't flip, no. right? Yeah. What? Why is that? Because he just he's got something else to do with the mana, and he keep wants the next turn's surveil. Oh, I don't know. interesting. Um. What's he got to do with the mana? He's got an expansion explosion. He's going to draw ah, cards off of it. Okay, right, right. So he's setting up for a big one. Oh, no, but, but he's already used that. Just... No, he's already used that. It's uh, in the bin. But then you just want to transform it so it's a land anyway, right? Yeah. But then, yeah, but then, you, then you're committed to spending three mana on it every turn. But he's okay. got enough lands to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you pay just eight life straight up? Uh, the rug life player? So, depending on what the cards are. So for him, he's got so many cards in hand because he's been uh, kind of set back by two gushes over the course of the game and not hitting the green source. So because of that, he doesn't need the cards yet and he knows the Sylvan Library is never going to be destroyed against Blue-Red, ever. Mm. So he has no issues there whatsoever. That's a good brainstorm. He did flip the search then. Maybe he just forgot to last turn. Not as possible. So uh, I think that's good. Brainstorm. That's good if you've got some follow up. Yeah. Um, I, Tem- Tempo doesn't want to be casting counter spells to counter things one for one. They want to be casting counter spells to ensure that their guys turn sideways. Like that's about it. Mm. And so a brainstorm sometimes, even though it's going to give them a lot well, of value, you just go like, yeah, just go for it. Hootie with red back up here. Yeah. yeah. See, what? See, that's again. He didn't activate the relic. He left him with the delve. I've been punished so many times by Delve by not yeah. getting rid of the graveyard. You just want to snap it off real fast. Yeah, like they're saving it for Snapcast the Major or JVP or whatever, but then you're just giving them, giving them this resource to drop down one of the a premium threat, probably one of the best threats in the deck, especially against mm. Blue-Red. Uh, and he also could have cycled it and seen more cards, you know, uh, off the Relic. True. I also think, yeah, this is a lesson for me in how you're right about just dropping the one threat, even if it's a measly 2-2. Yeah. Um, if, if he'd kept the Grim Lava Mancer in hand, yep. he could have got there by now. That's it. You got to be really, so really ice. prudent with your with your threats. And just take an ice, fire ice. And this is also a good example of where your opponent has flipped as Canter, so they're ga- basically always going to have cards all the time. So not countering the brainstorm is good because it keeps you with a thing to pyroblast. Hour of devastation. Hour of devastation. That like gets really yeah, it's like five damage to everything. This is this is seen play uh, from Melbourne players, Hour of Devastation in the blue red decks, just because it's so hard to answer planeswalkers now that the fiery confluence rule is different. Yeah, I think it's a nice bit of innovation. There's a wink on if you can um, rattle it off. 
Yeah. Seem on a three turn clock. Oh. Yeah. There's a pyroblast there. Do you do that? Or do you keep the pyroblast? Uh, I keep the pyroblast there. Although I suppose it's hard yeah. to get in on the ground if there's an O4 wall. Yeah, I actually think it actually. Does, the question is, does it change your game plan? If it does, you have to counter it. So like, the wall, the zero four wall, and potential bounce in instant speed does affect your game plan, which is to kill them, <laughs> yeah. kill them with pressure. But either way, okay. he's got to a situation where he tried to, you know, bait out a counter spell or something. You know, try and get them to deal with the yeah. with the uh, the thing. In, to deal with the pyroblast that was countering the thing in the ice so that he can untap and play Garrick. Okay. It hasn't used actual lightning bolt yet either, so that's still in the deck. Yeah. Um, the fetch land on and the And Sendry Flow is still around as well. Mm. This is for Acol? Uh Yeah. In this situation, you go for Acol because Time Walk does literal nothing. Uh, but you can also go for uh, Price of Progress or for, um, what's it called? Lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah, which is why I like keeping the uh, the mental misstep because then it's like I'm going to protect this, protect whatever. The okay, thing is. so he's threatening to kill him next turn between the lightning bolt and the spell seeker. Hmm. Um, I don't know about lightning bolt over a call there. Well, I suppose there's not that much burn you can draw off the a call. You're going to get lands and things. Yeah, um, what you often uh, have to think about is. Um, the the minor efficiency that he has, and the fact that he could find some kind of counter spell. Oh, he's the, just got that off the yeah. search. So that's brutal. Yeah, I, he's got the red back up for the lightning bolt. That's annoying. Yeah. Hopefully so, he'll crack a fetch and die to lightning bolt with red back up, but I don't think that'll you, happen. Can you red fire an ice if it's in fire mode or not? No. Okay. It's a red spell. Um, because I had my soldier of the pantheon fired. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, when in in this one, like the lightning bolt is a constant fear, but it's not yeah, lethal. Yeah, personally, I'd just get a call there. Is that JVP? Because you've got the uh, clique. That's the clique's yeah. good. Because you've got pyroblast. Oh, do you run it in the main? Do you run it main phase there? At the least upkeep. Although, although then you can search and get another card. Mm. Oh, it's, it's resolved. Oh, it looks Perfect example of... Get rid um, of the Bev and then Lightning Bolt him. He's left it. He's left him with it. He can play through it because he's got Pyroblast in hand. Yeah. So he can use... You know, he's got Reb and Pyroblast or... Yeah, he's got both. Pyro, yeah. So he's, he's got the ability to play through it. Note also that there's absolute no answers for Garrick. Yeah. So... It's just a, a question of resolving it. Yeah, like when, when you do want to resolve it. So it could have resolved then if you just jammed it. But that's pretty ballsy. Like it's better yeah, to resolve yeah. something with the red back up, oh, like for, sure. for that, for example. For sure. Which is a decent answer to Cleek, not ideal. Well, it's basically not going to be played, right? <laughs> or play. Mm. Actually, no. Now that now that uh, his hand is public information, he has to play it because you know there's no other option there. So now it's like, do you want to hydro blast this? Because I've got a lightning bolt. I think that's a good good red there. Yeah, for sure. Because he hydro blasts, and then he is he is forced to bounce the click so he doesn't die. And now he can't use this yep. land because he there knows this lightning bolt. Yep. Now Goblin Guard. No, he's already Goblin here. He had Goblin Guard. <laughs> Garrick? Garrick. Yeah. Play Garrick. So this is this is a Sylvan Library where you end up often drawing a land just because you go, well, I just want to jam this and also have a lightning bolt. Yeah, there it is. There's a land. So. Well, that's good. Oh, Double yeah, burn. Yeah. And this is this is a, another perfect example of why I play Max Burn in my decks, where it's just like I play Pillar of Flame. You know, as long as it hits the creature and the player, I'm happy with it. And if it exiles a creature, I'm even more happy with it. Like Incendiary Flow and Pillar of Flame. Fire Blast, though, you don't play that. I don't play Fire Blast, but I've entertained it. Mm. I've I've been thinking about it because my because my build is is uh, designed to win in the early to mid game. Um, before it ends up into the mid to late game, uh, Fire Blast fits that strategy, it fits quite well. Uh, but I have not yet had a chance to sleeve it up. I just actually haven't had a chance to play much Magic recently at all. Yeah. So, you but when too, I do, I'll, I'd like to sleep. You're it too up. busy running tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, Eddie. Got there. So we're on to game three. Uh, let's see if the approach changes at all. Graham's on the play now. That's going to help. Yeah. So that's that's a good example of the tenacity of a burn player, like the confidence that you can get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, mm. this is really, really 
what we were talking about before, which was tempo is designed to get you done, get you done, get you fried within that first part of the game. And then if it doesn't, it's put you in such a precarious position that you have to play differently. And like Graham would have loved to just be searching for Azcanter and you know like playing a Jason Mind Sculptor and protecting it. He drew that later, but you, you get the point where he, he just wants to use his mana liberally and do whatever he wants. But he just could never ever tap efficiently because he was on four and he could die at instant speed anytime. Mm -hmm. right, let's see what the opening hands are like. There's some lands, red elemental blast for Ed. Um, let's see if they both keep their seven. Yes, they do. That's good. Island go. Mm -hmm. There's a DAC for Ed. I wouldn't keep the DAC in against control. Oh, yeah. You keep Always keep in. it in yeah. just to loot away lands yeah. and things. The only time I ever take DAC out ever is against hyper aggressive decks uh, like Fringy Bros. Yeah. A call cool for Ed there. That's a nice one. So you just got to jockey into position to try and resolve that. He's got the red back up. Don't you just jam it in the, uh, in the it, upkeep? It entirely depends on what your game plan is. Because sometimes it's more important to get a threat out than it is to draw more cards. Yeah. So sometimes you just keep the A-call. Because it's not like it's ever going to be thought seized. So you just keep the A-call. And then you leverage a situation wherein you're going okay. to pyroblast to protect your goblin guide or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I can see the value in that. If, you, if you're not going to get it thought seized, you can just leave it to the last card you play. Yeah, exactly. To refuel. And this way you're putting the screws on your opponent. You keep Ooh. protecting that you know, one threat, keep protecting it, get their life total low, they spend all their resources killing it, and then you go, oh, okay, end of turn, A call, go to my turn, untap, play, Chandra Torture Defiance. I think Graham's smelling blood here. He's got back to basics in his hand, and um, Ed's just um, tutored up two non-basics. Yeah, yep. Uh, I... When when I'm on Rug Life and I'm against Blue Moon, usually I just assume that they have only back to basics. Like they've taken out the two moons, they've kept back to basics, and so I usually fetch one basic island and uh, then the second land is the decision. Like whether I get Tiger or something, depends. Yeah. I think Ed's going to get got here. Oh yeah, he's going to get wrecked by back to basics. If your opponent is fetching basic lands eagerly, uh, you know that they're not necessarily just playing around the pop, they probably have back to basics in, even if they don't have the moons. Luckily, that was end of turn. So if um, Ed's got counter magic, he could maybe um, stop the back to basics. But he's tapping out for a threat, which is understandable because Graham shields are down. But DAC is not a threat. Yeah, it's interesting because you can use it to... Graham's feeling fantastic right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, this is a great spot for Graham, yeah. for sure. Um I am definitely known out for never tap out, never surrender. So uh, I wouldn't jam this here. I would much, much rather have, yeah, I would much, much rather have a play a two drop. See how you got the Die Fleet Daredevil in hand? Just mm. play the Die Fleet Daredevil for no value and keep up one counter spell, mm. like a, pyro, a pyro blast or a Elemental Blast. It's got days. So you, <laughs> Graham played around the days, like just, oh, well, you know, coincidentally, probably, but. Um, he, the days will be handy if he can cast it. He, maybe he should have just cast it, got the Volcanic back, play the Volcanic and Red Elemental Blast, but he's got to land anyway. So he can get Tager and do the Reb on the um, on the back to basics to get his lands back. Yeah. It's it's funny because, yeah, you can use the days later on for the return because fundamentally your deck's going to be getting one land and then discarding the rest. You just don't want to see more than two land anyway. So now he can, you know, fetch a basic green mm -hmm. and then next one he can fetch a basic island. Yeah. And then between them he'll be able to yeah. uh, engineer a situation. I mean, in my aggro deck, I value the looting as well because I don't want many lands, so I loot them away. But mm -hmm. I don't go all the way to dark. I just use creatures because they, they're both doing both damage and looting. But Like wolf, wolf infiltrator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I think you could play that in Rugby. No, you don't have enough creatures. All right, this is good. Um, yeah, draw step clip. It's nice. And he's so he has to go for the reb now on the back to basics. No, he doesn't. He doesn't no, have it. The, the reb was used. Remember to protect the acorn. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. well behind. Yeah, you're well behind. <laughs> Which is why I just don't like protecting your card draw. I like protecting your threats because you got to remember that you're a yeah. you're a deck that needs to finish the game with threats, not to finish the game by draw out drawing your opponent. Yeah. So you protect the card draw when you control. When you control. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, it's got a lot of cards, but yeah. he doesn't have a lot of mana. Exactly. And he doesn't so have the initiative. Goblin Guide in hand, I believe. Yeah, Goblin Guide. Goblin Guide and Die Fleet. Yeah. And you True can name. see why 
like a lot of people are really reticent to play their dive fleet out without getting value. Mm. But I think I play him out as a two on first striker maybe half the time I've got him. Right. And just because applying pressure to your opponent in tempo decks is so important and he's in there for that mode. If you're not doing that mode, then you're not you're missing out on half a card. Like getting value is a second second thought, you know. Sometimes yeah. you just get value. We're doing two damage is almost a lightning bolt, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. And did you learn that playing splinter splinter to win, like the the kind of or just general principles, I suppose? Uh, I yeah. I learned it a lot from just playing lots of Legacy Delver. Okay. Where, you know, uh, although Legacy Delver doesn't have any, you know, value generating creatures, uh, the principles of you know, like in Rug Delver, where the principles of uh, play your Delver turn two instead of turn one because you want to keep your stifle up for their mm. land, and then yeah. you know, like those those kind of plays. Unless you've got a daze, you don't play the you know the play the Delver turn one, and all these kind of things that are you know just hashtag tempo life. Uh, that links into what we were saying before about protecting the threats rather than protecting the. It's got a basic island here, a basic mountain, sorry, which is very sweet. Um, yeah. And his DAC is actually threatening ultimate, or maybe not now. Yeah, it's still threatening ultimate, so he could be in a position to steal things, but not with the clique beating down DAC. Yeah. Gush is good against back to basics, but I wouldn't do it end of turn. You do it in your own main phase. Um, well, I suppose it doesn't make a difference because you're not untapping the lands. Yeah. And you can, and if they're going to counter it, yeah. I still also out. fetch. Fetch basic forest off the uh, windswept heath though, mm. just so you don't draw basic forest. Because if you draw basic forest off your gush, yeah, do you feel so bad. It's dead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Now I can't fetch anything with this windswept heath. It's terrible. We well, could get Tiger, but you don't want yeah, that. Yeah, you do not want that. All right. Well, we're rocking now. We've got some lands. We've got some basics. But... Yeah. And this is again talking about how rug life honestly doesn't care about back to basics and blood moon, well, unless you get got. Yeah. Like, and here he got got. But he's managed to work his way through it, but he's losing losing tempo as he's doing it. Uh, he's doing what he can, uh, but it is mm. it is a sign that yeah, usually the blue moon players will not have moons in post board, but they might have back to basics. I think, but I think it's I think the deck's still pretty resilient to back to basics. Is the forest in hand or something? Where's the forest? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's is it there? Yeah, is that it? He ducked it away. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think he would have. That that would yeah. have been very strange. He wouldn't have boarded it out because not enough land. Or maybe he got punished and he actually did draw the forest off the gush. Mm. Yes, he did. The forest is in hand. <laughs> oh no! Well, he can play it next turn. Oh no! It feels so bad. He's got a five-five. That's cool. Yeah. And he's got play some die fleet. He's got another threat. So, like there, is that a over playing the board by deploying uh, a second threat, or is that important for mana efficiency? So, because he is behind, yeah. he has to catch up. Yeah, he has to, uh, and he wouldn't have had to do this if he didn't jam the deck uh, yeah. early and just made the goblin piker, because. Uh, oh, that's, okay, he's cycled the cycle swelter because exactly. it doesn't kill the terramander. Mm -hmm. And it hurts his own click. The click's going to die to Grim Lava Mancer if nothing happens. Yeah. He's, no, he's running uh, it into a 5-5. Five five. He's not uh, blocking. Yeah. Uh, you don't take that block ever. Yeah. Yeah. You just let Dak die. Dak's done his work because if you take the block and they fire, they um, you know do anything, fire and ice it, then you just feel so bad. Yeah. Like, your win con is the Terramander, so you're going to have to go the distance with it. That's the whole plan. And I think he might because what's what's he going to do against the 5-5 five five flyer? Yeah. And the he's got out of devastation. Well, yeah, the five five flyer is the reason. Like Terramander, don't get me wrong. Terramander is a good card. It's really good if you want to go to the mid to late game, which is where which Ed is where forced. we are right now. Yeah. But it was because he was forced into that position, not because he chose to go into it. So that's why I don't currently play Terramander because I don't want to ever choose to go to the late game. Um, but I can see why people like it because. When you do go to the late game, you've got an out, and you've got this really, really big out. Do you always choose your card? Oh, he scooped it to the 5-5. Five five. No, because there's a time walk in hand. Oh, a time walk, okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. Spellseeker for time walk gets there. Um, and yeah, in instrumental there is that the time walk didn't win the game. <laughs> the time walk was just speeding the game up by, two by a turn, but fundamentally the yeah. game was won by you know, temper creatures like Grim Lavamancer and uh, uh, not, uh, Goblin Guide and... You know, um, 
what is it? Any literally any threat, right? Yeah. So the Graham, fact that it's a five five fly is great, but you know any threat will do it. Well, no, well, Graham had the anger of the gods, so it needed to be. Oh, sweltering, yeah, it's sweltering, sweltering sun. Needed to right. be big. Got but yeah, anger it could in be. Hand. Could be um, Tarmogoyf, hitting mandrills, you know, blah blah blah. Any of them. Anyway. Well um, done, Ed. Yeah. Hard excellent. Thought. Excellent game. Sticking it in there. Uh, Rug life takes it down two one. So Ed goes in undefeated into the final round, and then we have uh, some top eight after that. All right, see you see then. Ya.